the wide variety of cultural practices of which there are hundreds of years of traditions employ sensibilities which are embodied. So for me the question is how, how can we envisage and how can we build cultural technologies which uh, exploit or explore some of those modes of interacting with the world. So Fugitive, just to take case in point, interprets large body movement and demonstrates that it, quote, understands large bodily movement of people. The vestibule area contains seating and two screens. One screen provides live video feed from the system as seen by the user. The other provides a real-time volumetric rendering of the user in the interaction space derived from the infrared vision system. The user enters the interaction space via a darkened corridor. Light control is critical to the functioning of the system. When the user moves about the space the image responds instantaneously by changes in its physical position on the wall, generally remaining diametrically opposite the user. But if the user comes too close to the image, it runs away. The action takes place in a 9 meter or 30 foot diameter circular room. Inside the space, mounted overhead, are 12 infrared floodlights, 4 video cameras, and a video projector suspended from a motion control rig. Adjacent to the interaction space is a control room containing two PCs running the vision system, the video database system and real-time 3D rendering. The heart of Fugitive 2 is the multi-camera machine vision system. This system constructs a real-time 3D model of the user in the interaction space derived from the four camera images. All behaviour of Fugitive is based on information from this system. Acceleration, velocity, angular movement of the user and other parameters are extracted from the vision system data. Specific values for these parameters trigger entry into and exit out of specific locations in specific video clips. The video database contains over an hour of video encoded as motion JPEG. There are nine locations and a total of 437 shots. Each location is captured as full circle pans and zoom shots for every sector. There are generally 24 zooms or one for every 15 degrees of rotation. Each zoom shot is indexed to a specific keyframe on the pan so that the transition from pan to zoom and vice versa is coherent. When the user moves around the room in an orbital circular path, they trigger a pan shot. As they continue to move on such a path, sequential frames of the pan are presented across the wall as if a virtual window was moving across the wall. If the user moves radially towards the image, a zoom sequence of the view from that point in the pan is shown. In all cases, the frame rate of the video is proportional to the user's velocity. It's very important to me that, as a user of Fugitive, you can walk in, you don't need to read the manual, you don't need to do the tutorial, you don't need any special training, you don't have to strap on any special gear, you're not tethered by a cable, and you don't have to learn some symbolic language on some kind of an input device. You walk in, you use the skills that you have developed in interacting with the world, and it works that way. In that way it fits into my conception of what we have to do as artist researchers. The current technological context, as I see it, is that we have, for the first time, a technology which we can exploit to build cultural artefacts which have behaviour. That has never happened before. It's not been possible to build cultural artefacts which respond to their environment before.
The original Fugitive Project was begun in 1995 at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, USA, and was completed at the ZKM in Karlsruhe, Germany in 1997. The goal was to build a system with rich and diverse behaviour which interpreted and responded to large physical movement and gesture. At the time, machine vision was a new and active research area at the cutting edge of robotics, made possible by increases in available computational power. The notion of an artwork that utilised analysis of real-time video as a source for sensing and interpreting a behaviour was rare. All the code and all the machinery for Fugitive was custom made. It is a testament to the rapid change in digital technologies that similar machine vision systems are now available as interfaces to desktop games. It's, it's amazing, I mean, one would think this is random, how, how can it be more random? No, they can still extract yeah. information. Thank <laughs> you.